The first book is Why Mosquitoes Buzz in People's Ears. Now, do y'all know why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears? No? But you, you've had that before, right? Had mosquitoes buzzing in your ears? Okay, well, I think we're going to find out today. So why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears? One morning, a mosquito saw an iguana drinking at a water hole. The mosquito said, iguana, you will never believe what I saw yesterday. And here we have a picture, the iguana. Try me, said the iguana. The mosquito said, I saw a farmer digging yams that were almost as big as I am. What's a mosquito compared to a yam, snapped the iguana grumpily. I would rather be deaf than listen to such nonsense. Then he stuck two sticks in his ears and went off, meck, 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 through the reeds. Got seen an iguana before? Yeah, okay. The iguana was still grumbling to himself when he happened to pass by a python. Now, what's a python? What's that? Y'all know it's a big snake. That's right. Look, we have a picture of it right here. The big snake raised his head and said, good morning, iguana. The iguana did not answer, but lumbered on, bobbing his head. Bataman, bataman. Now, why won't he speak to me, said the python to himself. Iguana must be angry about something. I'm afraid he is plotting some mischief against me. He began looking for somewhere to hide. The first likely place he found was a rabbit hole. And in it he went. When the rabbit saw the big snake coming into her burrow, she was terrified. She scurried out through her back way and bounded, crick, 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 across a clearing. A crow saw the rabbit running for her life. He flew into the forest crying, ka, ka, ka. It was his duty to spread the alarm in case of danger. We see it here. See him Sh shrieking to warn everybody. A monkey heard the crow. He was sure that something dangerous, some dangerous beast was prowling near. He began screeching and leaping killy willy through the trees to help warn the other animals. As the monkey was crashing through the treetops, he happened to land on a dead limb. It broke, and he fell on an owl's nest, killing one of the owlets. Mother owl was not at home. You see her holding her owlets in the nest here. For though she usually hunted only at night, this morning she was still out searching for one more tidbit to satisfy her hungry babies. When she returned to the nest, she found one of them dead. Her other children told her that the monkey had killed it. All that day and all that night, she sat in her tree, so sad, so sad, so sad. Now it was Mother Owl who woke the sun each day so that the dawn could come. But this time, when she should have hooted for the sun, she did not. Now what happens when the owl doesn't hoot for the sun? Will it still rise? No, we might not have sun that day, right? The night grew longer and longer. The animals of the forest knew it was lasting much too long. They feared that the sun would never come back. At last, King Lion called a meeting of the animals, and we have all the animals here, these pretty pictures. They came and sat down around a council fire. Mother Owl did not come, so the antelope was sent to fetch her. When she arrived, King Lion asked, Mother Owl, why have you not called the sun? The night has lasted long, 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 and everyone is worried. Mother Owl said, monkey killed one of my owlets. Because of that, I cannot bear to wake the sun. The king said to the gathered animals, did you hear? It was the monkey who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. Then King Lion called the monkey. He came before him nervously, glancing from side to side. Rim, rim, rim. Monkey, said the king, why did you kill one of Mother Owl's babies? And we see the King Lion here and monkey there. Oh, king, said the monkey, it was the crow's fault. He was calling and calling to warn us of danger. And I went leaping through the trees to help. A limb bro broke under me and it fell on the owl's nest. So the king said to the council, 
So it was the crow who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. Then the king called for the crow. That big bird came flapping up. He said, King Lion, it was the rabbit's fault. I saw her running for her life in the daytime. Wasn't that reason enough to spread an alarm? The king nodded his head and said to the council, so it was the rabbit who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. Then King Lion called the rabbit. The timid little creature stood before him, one trembling paw drawn up uncertainly. You see the rabbit right here, King Lion in the back. Rabbit, cried the king, why did you break a law of nature and go running, running, running in the daytime? Oh, king, said the rabbit, it was the python's fault. I was in my house minding my own business when that big snake came in and chased me out. The king said to the council, so it was the python who scared the rabbit, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. King Lion called the python. So you know he's got to ask the python now. He's asked everybody what happened. So he called the python, who came slithering past the other animals. But King, he cried, it was the iguana's fault. He wouldn't speak to me. We see the python slithering up. And I thought he was plotting some mischief against me. When I crawled into the rabbit's hole, I was only trying to hide. The king said to the council, so it was the iguana who frightened the python, who scared the rabbit, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. So all of that happened in a row. We don't have the sun because of it. Now, the iguana was not at the meeting, for he had not heard the summons. The antelope was sent to fetch him. All the animals laughed when they saw the iguana coming. Bataman, Bataman, with a stick still stuck in his ears. Iguana again. King Lion pulled out the sticks. Then he asked Iguana, what evil have you been plotting against the python? None, none at all, cried the iguana. Python is my friend. Then why wouldn't you say good morning to me, demanded the snake. I didn't hear you or even see you, said the iguana. Mosquito told me such a big lie I couldn't bear to listen to it, so I put sticks in my ears. Yes, said the iguana. It was the mosquito's fault. King Lion said to the council, so it was the mosquito who annoyed the iguana, who frightened the python, who scared the rabbit, who startled the crow, who alarmed the monkey, who killed the owlet, and now Mother Owl won't wake the sun so that the day can come. Punish the mosquito, punish the mosquito, cried all the other animals. You see all the animals there. When Mother Owl heard that, she was satisfied. She turned her head toward the east and hooted, hoo, 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 and the sun came up. Meanwhile, the mosquito had listened to it all from a nearby bush. She crept under a curly leaf and was never found and brought before the council. But because of this, the mosquito had a guilty conscience. To this day, she goes about whining in people's ears. Z, is everyone still angry at me? When she does that, she gets an honest answer. You see the mosquito there buzzing? So now we know why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. The end. <laughs> wow, that was a nice story. Did y'all like that one? I really like that. I didn't know why, why mosquitoes buzz in people's ears. So that was nice. Now, do y'all want another one? Y'all want one more? I think we'll have time for one more book, OK? Well, let's see. Let's do an Easter book. OK, so this one is The Golden Egg Book. You know that book? Have you read that one? Really? You have it? Oh, well, I should let you read it then, huh? You want to come up and read it with me? 
I should let you read it. All right, look, come on, have a seat. Come on. Okay, there we go. The Golden Egg Book. Once there was a little bunny. He was all alone. And we see the little bunny there with the egg. One day he found an egg. He could hear something moving inside the egg. What was it? Do you know? Um, a baby duck. Okay, let's see. Oh. Maybe a little boy. Maybe another bunny. Maybe an elephant. Maybe a mouse. See, he's trying to imagine what's in that egg. Yeah. It's impossible. You cannot tell. Now, who could tell what he would find? And how would a little bunny know? But there was something inside that egg. He could hear something moving. He shook it. See? Then the bunny pushed the egg with his foot. No, I didn't know bunnies had feet. They have feet? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they have claws, okay. He jumped on top of the egg. He climbed a tree and threw nuts at it. You think that would work? Throwing nuts at the egg? No. He rolled the egg down a hill, but still it didn't break. And whatever was in the egg didn't come out. So the bunny threw a rock at the egg. But because he was only a little bunny, it was a very little rock, and he didn't throw it very hard, and the egg didn't break. Still have to wait to find out what's in that egg. Pick, pick, pick. Something was trying to get out of that egg. The bunny sat very still and watched through his shining eyes. And see the bunny sitting. I have to show it there too, huh? Okay. Yeah, I gotta show it to everybody. You couldn't see? I'm sorry. <gasps> he sat very still and listened with his big, soft ears. Pick, pick, pick. Then the little bunny began to yawn. He yawned and yawned. Now, why would he yawn? He, he was tired. You think he was tired? He fell asleep on the egg. Oh, the egg was very quiet. He curled up all sleepy and warm, close to the egg, and went to sleep. He went to sleep because he was so sleepy. Then, pick, 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 and peck, 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 and crackety crack, out jumped a little yellow duck. You're right. <laughs> Well, what is this, said the little duck when he saw the bunny. What could this little fur thing be? The bunny was very sleepy, so he was still asleep and didn't wake up. Inside the egg, said the duck, I thought I was all alone in a small, dark world. Now I find myself alone with the bunny in a big, bright world, and the bunny won't wake up. So that was the duck in the egg, but now he's out. So the duck pushed the bunny with his foot and jumped on top of him and threw a little rock at him and rolled him down a hill. Now, isn't that all the things the bunny did to the duck in the egg? <laughs> and the bunny woke up. Where is my egg, said the bunny. And where did you come from? Never mind that, said the duck. Here I am. So the bunny and the duck were friends, and no one was ever alone again. The end. Oh, that was nice. Thank you for that. Thank you for helping me. What's your name? Kate. Kate. Thank you, Kate. Catherine, but you like Kate. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you all very much.